People always ask me what it's like to be a low-income landlord, and I think we do a really good job on Holton Wise TV letting you guys know what that's like through all of our videos. But everybody likes lists, so what we're doing today is five things I didn't know people did till I became a low-income landlord. <laughs> The first thing I didn't know people did until I became a low-income landlord is break their toilets. Now, I'm not talking about eating too much Taco Bell and clogging that thing. No, 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 no. I'm talking about physically breaking the fucker, either breaking the bowl, breaking the tank, breaking it off the floor. I am 33 years old, and in my entire life, I have never broken a toilet or met another human being who has broken a toilet but once i became a low income landlord i was shocked at the amount of toilets that were out there getting broken the second thing i learned is people do a lot of heroin now i know about heroin everybody knows about heroin right but you guys would be shocked at just how much heroin is out there being done. It's completely shocking to me how many times my staff comes across old dirty needles when we're cleaning out these apartments. It's pretty crazy. So you got to pay attention when you're out there doing a clean out or you're going to get some AIDS. You know, I got talking about, man. Number three, suck your dick for a pack of cigarettes. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, this silver spoon in his mouth, rich asshole landlord doesn't know what it's really like out there on the streets. He's not, you know, from these types of neighborhoods. He's got no idea what he's talking about. Look, guys, I am not a spoon-fed rich asshole landlord, okay? I actually grew up in a C-grade neighborhood, a neighborhood Holton Wise has hundreds upon hundreds of single-family and duplex homes, right? So, you know, I understand how the streets work, okay? I get that, right? I am a self-made rich asshole landlord. So back in the day, I was just a poor asshole, right? So I'm hip to the games. I know what's going on out there, but I got to tell you, Meeting my first transsexual prostitute was a big surprise. I really wasn't expecting it. As a matter of fact, in one of the very early episodes of the Tenants from Hell show, we made an entire episode about my encounter with that transsexual prostitute. Banging on my window, making the motion that she's going to do this. I realized it's actually a transsexual prostitute. So I'm like, whoa, I just flagged down a transsexual prostitute. So I hang up the phone and I'm like, go away, go away. <laughs> You're going to have to check it out. You can tell it's an old video because I got a lot less gut, a lot more hair, but the seps were a lot smaller. Flashback. What in the hell are you doing? What, bro? I got to get the seps pumped for the video. By the way, you notice how expensive cigarettes are these days? Number four, abandon their pets. Now, I, I am really serious about this one. I know we're having some fun with this video because, I mean, dude, when you're dealing with some of this crazy shit, what else can you do but laugh it off, right? You'll go crazy if you don't. But this one really pisses me off, man. I really fucking hate this. Uh, it is so common for people to abandon their pets when they move out or get evicted, right? They get evicted, and uh, we go there on the eviction day. They're gone, but pets are just left in the home, often without food or water. Or sometimes they will move out in the middle of the night, and uh, we don't even know about it for like a week or two, and we'll go in there, and there's abandoned pets, right? Sometimes, uh, if we're lucky, we get there. Uh, in time, right, and we get to save the pets. We've had employees adopt them or we've taken them to shelters, things of that nature. Other times, though, it, it's not the case. Sometimes you run across uh, homes where an abandoned pet, uh, they're dead by the time we get there because they starve to death, right? I remember this one house we did, and you go into the home and there's, you know, and your toilet, you know how there's a little bit of water? There's no water left in one of these or all the toilets in the unit because uh, the cat that was stranded there was drinking it until he ultimately died, man. That shit pisses me off. Did I just... Hey. Yeah, pause, so... Looks a little bit stuck. Number five. The last thing I didn't know people did until I became a low-income landlord. No show their apartment showing appointments, right? This is ridiculous. I never would have saw this coming. And pretty much everybody I've ever hired to be a leasing agent was shocked with this. I don't know what the deal is, but in low-income neighborhoods, for whatever reason, 
whenever someone's trying to make showing appointments with their tenants, uh, you make the showing appointment. Hey, Mr. Tenant, we're going to meet at the house tomorrow, 4 o'clock, right? Then you confirm with the tenant the next day. Hey, it's 3.30. We're still going to meet at 4 o'clock. I'm driving out to the house now. And they're like, yeah, man, no problem. I'm getting in the car right now. And then they don't fucking show up. Like, it's, it's a ridiculous. It's like epidemic proportions how often this actually happens. I'd say it's like literally 30% of the people that say they're going to show up don't. It's completely insane. So insane that my company, as well as many other seasoned investors and landlords, uh, switched to a policy where we only utilize group showings, right? You just tell everybody, hey, show up on this day at this time. That's the only appointment, right? And then everybody just shows up and it's first come, first serve because so many of them don't show up to personalized appointments. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.